Okay, so our first steps are going to be to uh, isolate what precisely we want to render. So in this particular facade, it's quite detailed. Um, you'll, I, what, when it comes to like the scope of what you're going to model, it can be as large or as small as you want it to be. Um, so the idea is you're representing something about how the building goes together without having to model the entire building. So this is kind of a combination of an axonometric section, or it could be if I set up the camera right. Um, but really what I want to show is one particular detail. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pick kind of a module, I think, of maybe you know two to four panels, and I'm going to show the assembly of the system just kind of pulled apart in an exploded uh, axonometric or isometric or anything like that. Uh, so first off, I'm going to cut it to where, oh, let me get rid of some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to cut it down to the size that I actually want. Um, I think, yeah, these are already kind of broken down into uh, groups of four in my model, so that actually works out really well for me. Um, so I'm going to, let's get rid of the base in mine, um, and then we'll do a couple of, um, we're going to do a couple of subtractions just to get rid of some of the extra geometry. Um, it doesn't matter for me which level I take, so I'm just going to take those top two. And I'm going to get rid of, I guess I'll just get rid of the side that's already clipped. So get rid of those. Um, so yours is probably going to look a little bit different, but this is the one that I'm going to model. So I'll just kind of clip out everything else that's, that's uh, a, I guess, outside of that. So let me do a couple of boxes for subtractions. So I'm just going to do a box that kind of clips off some of the, the slab behind it. And you can pull that as, as close to or as far from the geometry as you really desire. So I'm going to leave a couple of feet of the floor slabs. Um, and they are not solid. Let's see if cap will work on those. Yeah, I'm going to make them solid so I can trim them. Um, so I'll cap those and then do a Boolean difference. Um, so the other thing I'm going to do is do the same thing, but I'm going to clip off everything um, up to the edge. It doesn't have to be totally perfect. We're just going to show the assembly of this system. So I'll do another box. That's pretty straight, so I'll just go up to about there. And then um, let me verify if these are solid. They are not. Um, so we'll probably, let's just do a split on those make it easy on ourselves. So I'll select these objects to split using that. And then we can get rid of these. And then we can do our Boolean difference on the slabs again. OK, clear as day. All right, so you guys already know that kind of stuff, though. Um, so like anything else we do in this class, um, the, the most important thing that you have to do in order to be able to reproduce a render should something go wrong is what? Been, has it been a long week, guys? So what is the most important thing that you need to do in order to reproduce a render should something go wrong with it and you need to redo it? Save. What? Save it. Save what? Actually, you're not wrong, but that's not where I was going. Um, yet, yet, yes, definitely you want to save your file, and I should have done that before I did this. So I'll just save as, so I don't save over the original one. Um, so let me call this one facade A. We're going to call it exploded axon. Okay, and then what else? Exported. Not yet. <laughs> All right, so um, saving what else? Yes, save your view. So whatever view you pick, um, and let me just kind of preface that, preface that by saying, um, if you're going to produce an actual axonometric view, um, you need to have your camera set in parallel projection. Do you know the difference between parallel and perspective projection? Oh. What's that? Line. What about them? Right, precisely. So yeah, they're going to be parallel, but it's, it's even more than that. Um, so basically, whatever you set your lines to be, or your, your camera angle in terms of its height, determines where the, the lines that are sort of projecting back into your scene are going to be. So um, have you heard of isometric 
projection or isometric drawing? Yeah. Isometric is when you've got your, um, the base of your geometry is here. And then this degree is 30 degrees. So, so that is, that is a, an exact isometric view. So it has to be projecting back at 30 degrees on one of its sides. Um, so an axonometric sort of has some freedom. Generally speaking, you want to put it at 45 degrees, um, but you sort of have to calculate where you need your camera to go um, when you do that. So um, let's change our projection first to parallel if you haven't done it already, if you're following along, but I don't know how many of you are. Um, so then, uh, then we just need to set the camera angle. So the important part about setting that camera angle is um, we need to pick a geometry that's going to give us uh, basically the, the angle of the camera tilted up that we want to project. So that can take, that can take a number of different forms. Um, remember when we did uh, setting the camera view in our interior perspective? What tool did we use? When we were doing our interior perspective, right, we set a very specific camera position and angle. Yeah. Huh? Cl close enough. I think I kind of get what you're talking about. But yeah. Um, yeah, so you have to go into your um, set camera. And then you go to place camera and target. So yes, not point, but target. Um, so when you do that, you don't have to do it to an object that you're trying to um, that you're trying to focus on. You can actually do that to a referential object to get an angle that you desire, and then focus on the object that you want to focus on. So um, what I'm going to do down here on let's do it kind of in a, yeah front view for now. Um, I'm going to draw that 45 degree angle. So that 45 degree angle is going to be something that I can move into place in order to orient it to the geometry that I'm trying to represent. So um, let's do, uh, actually the easiest way to get a 45 degree angle is just do a square and then draw a line across it. Boop. Whoops. Never mind. It would have been faster for me to just change my ortho at that point if I didn't screw it up. Um, so anyway, this geometry exists in three-dimensional space. I can pull it relative to the, the object I'm uh, representing, and I can turn it 45 degrees. So that way, I can kind of turn my camera angle in a way that's going to place it, I guess, preferential or referential to, um, to the geometry I'm representing. So I'm going to pull this thing off to the corner, and then I'm going to say, let's get big on this view here. I'm going to say set camera, place camera in target, and I'm going to say place my camera here, target there. Okay, it's not centered on my geometry, but as long as I don't revolve or orbit out of plane, I can just zoom out and zoom back in on where I want that geometry to be placed in my view or pan, whatever you're used to. Um, so this is going to be the view that I'm going to render. This is an axonometric view. What questions do you have? No questions. All right, um, so we're going to move into rendering after this.